Representatives of different nationalities, Buryats, Tatars and Bashkirs took part in a rally in New York. They are protesting against the Kremlin regime and the war it has unleashed. We've lost not only millions of lives over the centuries, we've lost waste territories. The protest took place as a part of the Week of Enslaved Peoples. Representatives of authoritative political organizations of the Buryat people gathered in New York. Mobilization for war against Ukraine is a hidden form of genocide, the Congress participants believe. Buryatia has the largest number of dead among the nationalities of Siberia and the Far East, whose names have been established. And the propagandists' statements about thousands of volunteers are just another lie, human rights activists say. What is there to die for? People realize that there is no a single reason to fight. No queues at military commissions. There haven't been any volunteers for a long time. They couldn't recruit them last summer. And this summer it's pointless on the part of military commissions and authorities. Mothers of Buryat conscripts turn to human rights defenders for help because their sons and husbands are sent to slaughter right from their hospital beds. However, there are far fewer such appeals now. People are afraid of reprisals. Here's what they write to us. I'm coming to you again for help. My brother was on holiday. Now he doesn't want to come back. Do you have lawyers? Are the phone numbers that you published relevant now? This is the message I got on chat today, but there are no many of these appeals. Moscow behaves like a colonizer towards indigenous peoples. For centuries it has used them as cannon fodder, offering nothing in return. In Buryatia even pensioners and guardians of children with disabilities receive summonses. They are handed out right at their workplaces. And then without training, uniforms and equipment they are sent to war against Ukraine. From my first salary I started buying everything I needed myself. In total it took took 300,000 rubles for everything. On TV they talk about some powerful weapons, but I've never seen any new tanks. We drive old equipment, the same old BMP-1 or BMP-2. Half the time they are broken. Some of them have turrets that don't turn, some of them jam after three rounds. And that's the kind of equipment you ride on. Even if we take ordinary AGS grenade launcher, the Ukrainians have much more advanced versions. They are much better equipped. And ours has been in service since 1951. Servicemen from Buryatia in an interview with Siberia Realities. If we count the number of dead from the total number of inhabitants of a region, Buryatia ranks second in the all-Russian rating after Tiva. Therefore, by order of the Russian Ministry of Defense, Tiva, Buryatia and four other Russian regions do not publish obituaries of servicemen who died in Ukraine, according to Verstka. The head of Buryatia, Alexei Tsidanov, has also stopped publishing obituaries of soldiers since December 2022. At the same time, he constantly refers to the topic of special operation, but writes about helping servicemen and their families, about awarding military honors to natives of the region, and also publishes patriotic poems. From the publication of the edition Verstka. The Buryatia independence movement of the Leash of Free Nations advocates an end to the war in Ukraine and the return of all territories temporarily occupied by Russia. The organization is also voting in favor of Buryatia's independence. Activists of the League of Free Nations assure that after Ukraine's victory, Buryatia will be the first to sign a peace treaty with Kyiv. Reported by Salhikulas, Victoria Smirnova, UATV News.